Hi guys. Hey, so I'm back in my kitchen and I'm going to show you how to make some salt dough. Now, I do have another video where I made a white porcelain dough that required us to um, use the stove and heat it up. Um, so this time I'm going to make a salt dough. The salt dough tends to be a little more stiff and it can kind of have hold up better if you want to make more of a three-dimensional structure versus maybe just a flat 2D um, flat shapes, okay? So I'm going to show you what I have in my bowl down here on my table, okay? So just a second, let me move more further more. There it is. Okay, sorry, the bowl is kind of got a lot of shine going on there, okay? So in here, what I have is I have some salt. I just went and bought the cheapest container of salt I could find just for this, just for crafting purposes. So it by no means has to be this kind of soap, so salt or this quantity, but um, just some regular old salt. And then it also requires some white flour. Um, I don't cook with white flour a lot, so I just got a small bag, whatever was cheapest for me to buy that day at the store, um, just because I don't use it for baking that much. I tend to use um, wheat flour for my baking needs. So in my bowl right now is um, half a cup of salt and one cup of, of flour and about and half a cup of water, okay? Now, the original recipe calls for two cups of flour, one cup of salt, and three-fourths of a cup of water. That makes quite a bit of salt dough, okay? So for just my son and I, I decided I was going to divide that recipe in half, okay? So I used one cup of flour and half a cup of salt, okay? So it's that two to one ratio. All right, you want one more, you want your larger quantity to be the flour, okay? And then half of whatever you use for the flour is going to be salt, okay? Um, I found over the years that these recipes are fairly forgiving. Um, I have another half a cup of water on my table here next to me. Depending on the time of year, that you are making this um, here in Iowa, it can take more or less water, depending on how accurately you measured stuff. It can take more or less water. All right. Um, when it's hot out in the summer and it's humid, so there's more water in the air, it can take less water. When it is cold. And in the winter and we have heaters on and stuff it can take more water because the heater is um, you know producing heat and evaporating some of the water from the air okay so it's all kind of a guess okay um, if your dough is really really soupy like mine came together in a ball pretty easily if yours is really, really soupy, sticky, then you need to go in and start adding more flour and salt. You want to try to keep those equal parts going on so that way you have that equal ratio, that two to one, I guess it's not really equal. You know, you've got the extra flour compared to the salt, okay? What I like about, um, these doughs is, these are things that you would eat and anyways. Um, n no, you would not eat half a cup of salt. N they don't recommend that we eat <laughs> uncooked flour, but I mean, it's, you know, it's, you know, your choice there. So if you made this and let's say you were going to use this with a younger sibling, if they put it in their mouth, it wouldn't necessarily be the end of the world. 
it's gonna taste really bad because of all the salt. Okay, so I'm gonna get my cutting board here just because it provides a nice surface for me um, with out it getting all over my table. I can clean it up a little faster. All right, so I'm gonna dump out my dough here, okay? Um, like I said, I like to use my cutting board just because um, it keeps my table cleaner. I can get rid of the mess a little faster. Okay, this dough, if you watched the other video on the porcelain dough, my bowl is not nearly as dirty as um, my frying pan was when I made the on the stove uh, porcelain dough. But, you know, it all works. Let me move this a little bit. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm going to kind of knead it or wedge it. Okay, so what I notice right now is different between the two doughs that I have made. It's, well, A, this one is faster. B, it's also cold water. So you could totally do this with a younger cousin or a younger sibling and not have to worry about, them burning themselves okay or having to wait for it to cool off before you can do anything okay so there's that factor um this has a little bit more of a kind of a grainy texture from the salt now depending on what recipe you use will depend on if you use kind of a warm water to kind of get the salt dissolved a little bit or not now it also does not have a bright white color to it, which I'm sorry, it's really hard to see. My lighting has changed and I've used my overhead light. Let me pop that off real quick and hopefully it's not too dark. Okay, so that's a little better actually. So, um, it is not a bright white dough, okay? If you're like, man, I want it to be white. Like, I don't want it to be kind of this off-white color. You could um, take, if you have white craft paint, I don't know how well it would work if you have white tempera paint, but if you have like white craft paint, you can take like, if you're making half the recipe like I did, I would take like a fourth of a cup of white craft paint and like a fourth of a cup of water and I would mix those up first so that way they were mixed together and use that as the liquid and what it's going to do is it's going to help change the color of this from white from this kind of off-white to the more bright white okay so this particular recipe you can put in the oven when you are done and you can in a low oven the recipe or the direction suggests putting it in a 200 degree oven for about um, 30 minutes, depending on how thick your creation is, will depend on how quickly um, it will dry out. I would say don't make them any more any thinner than you know about a quarter of an inch, um, just because they have a tendency to crack and break. I would not put it in a hotter degree oven thinking it's going to dry out faster chances are it's going to break okay um you might find out that you're if maybe if you have something that's like a half an inch thick or an inch thick that you need to maybe be able to turn it over about halfway through and that that half an hour point really is not what it's taking to dry out you also can let it dry out just sitting out okay again you might need to turn it or turn i'm turning things you might need to flip it over okay just because it's going to need a chance to dry what i've noticed is if you have one of those baking racks that they use with like cookies that lifts it off and it's the wire rack if you can put them on there it allows air to circulate all around and they kind they don't dry like significantly faster, 
but if you make something that's more of a sculpture that you can't easily turn over and have it rest on the, its top, I would maybe see if you can do that because then that's going to allow air to rotate all the way around, okay? So I can color this with the white temper paint and the water. I can take this as it is with using no temper paint or no, not temper paint, using no of the, none of the craft paint or the acrylic paint. I don't know how temper paint would work. They, the recipe said the um, craft, er, the craft paint. Um, I have not personally tried painting salt though. It's been a while since I have worked with it. Um, so I don't honest, I would, I would think you're better off with the craft paint than the temper paint because, but you could give it a try. Find out, let me know. You can also take it as this, take some of it, take sections of it, and you, if you've got food coloring, you could use food coloring and knead it in there, wedge it in there, and it will color that part of the dough. If you're like, I just want all of it green. Okay, you could take some green food and coloring. You might want to wear some gloves or leave it in the bowl and use the spoon, okay, and mix that in there and you can color it that way or you could just leave it like this and let it dry out and be like hey cool you don't want to get water on either one of the doughs but you don't want to get water on this just because it's not going to it's salt and flour it will disintegrate uh sealing it with like a clear spray um that is designed for sealing projects or painting it with that like the clear acrylic paint like we've used throughout class. They, you know, they make project varnishes and stuff like that. If that's something that you're interested in, let me know and I will t tell you the different, you know, like exactly what it's called, maybe where you can purchase some of it, because my guess is you probably don't have any, but um, I can give you some suggestions. This will stay in like a Ziploc bag type of thing. You know, Ziploc, Glad. Uh, what hefty makes them whatever store brand whatever but a zippered bag that you put like food and stuff in okay this will stay in there if you like squish all the air out and stuff for, and stay workable and good for I would guess a couple of days probably um, depending on how long you had it out while you were working I would definitely especially if I'm like I want to color this section or I'm only going to use a little and make something small right now I would definitely put the other portion back in the container and keep it the air getting away from it because it's going to draw the moisture out of it which is going to make it eventually hard okay so you can roll it out and use cookie cutters and cut those out you can roll it out and make structures with it do a variety of things to your heart's content usually what I've made have been flatter um, more like cookie cutter like things that I've done. I've also um, made just like flatter more relief like sculptures. I haven't tried to add a lot of small like small details with the dough. I've like drawn on it with uh, a sharpie when it was completely dry. Okay so there's a variety of things you can do with it but I know you guys are all always interested in the clay so I thought I would provide you with a couple different ideas of what you could do with some things that you probably got in your house. Um, this is a fairly simple recipe. There are hundreds of different ways to make different types of air dry clay, air dry dough. I've heard them referred to as both. Okay, so this is another one and I'm going to let my, my son and I will have fun making some things out of this and I will post those pictures with this video demonstration so that way you can see our finished results and what some of the ideas are that you could use with this. All right, so I will uh, be back with you guys with my next video, what it will be, I don't know yet, but I will be back to share that with you guys at another point in time. Bye!